Hey guys, uh, tonight I'm going to go over uh, a little issue that we found on a first outing on a new car, and um, this was a uh, this was a car that was down in Georgia for Ducks Race. It's the first time this car has ever been out to the racetrack. Um, it got a baseline on the dyno with like 11 pounds of boost in it, and um, and then it went to the racetrack. I was not there uh, to be able to actually tune this thing hands-on so uh, i, I kind of just had to go off of uh what i was being told and um you know conveying messages back and forth via uh email and phone calls so and a little bit of team viewer so uh what i'm going to show you here just for a little background uh this is a uh, 500 and 88 inch um big block chevrolet on alcohol with a 118 millimeter turbo. So this is a uh, this is a 3,000 ish horsepower combo, um, and it will this thing you know for its first outing. The pass I'm going to show you it went 440 at 169 on um, on some pretty low power and uh, well you know relatively low power and um, well a couple of little issues but. This is the first time out with this car for this guy. A uh, brand new car. Oh, it's an older car that has been rebuilt, you know, from top to bottom. And uh, the, the the owner of the car was kind of swinging blind a little bit. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it down there to Georgia to help him. So uh, we kind of just did everything over the phone. And the results, you know, worked out really well for, for what he was trying to do. Uh, but one thing that I'm seeing now that we're reviewing some data, this is off the last pass that he made. Uh, I found a, a, a misfire problem. And at the end of this video, I'm going to explain 100% what the actual issue was and why we had this misfire. But I thought I would take this opportunity to show you guys, um, you know, something in real life as to things to look for. Um, the, the reason for the misfire was actually kind of dumb, but uh, you'll, you'll see it in the log and uh, it should stand out to you. Uh, but, but anyway, here we go. So this is our base fuel table. Uh, when I wired this car up for this guy and, uh, you know, I got it fired up. I got it to spool and idle and all that kind of stuff. And then it, it went down to uh, Chris Tootin in Columbia, South Carolina to get a baseline. Uh, honestly, I don't think they ever exceeded 11 or 12 pounds of boost with this car. And I don't think they ever really exceeded 6,000 RPM. It was just trying to haze the tires on the dyno. But we just, he wanted to make sure all the functionality of the car was good. Drive shaft didn't come out of it and all that kind of stuff. So um, this is really a, uh, you know, a very, you know, very first time out with a car. So the, these fuel numbers, if you're not used to a turbo alcohol or blower alcohol combo, these, these fuel numbers probably look enormous to you. You know, I mean, you're looking at 4,000 pounds per hour of fuel. That's, you know, it's ridiculous for somebody who comes from, from a nitrous car, which is typically like, 600 pounds per hour of fuel. Uh, but uh, w w what we did here was I, I just basically calculated what I felt was it was going to make with uh, for horsepower and uh, used brake specific fuel consumption. And um, brake specific fuel consumption is how many, you know, in essence, how many pounds per hour per horsepower um, the fuel should support. So and I, I took a stab in the dark as to how much power I felt like it should make at each boost level and started plugging numbers in. So we got really dang close. Um, and uh, and he did very, very well uh, for being, you know, kind of, you know, all on his own. So what I have here is the fuel tables up. And this is the overlay of the log. So we're going to bring up the log. And here's the log. So I'm going to close out everything. There you go. So there's RPM. So we had these two little uh, little zingers right here, right? So obviously that slowed the car down, right? I mean that's blatantly obvious. It's going to slow the car down, right? So uh, some some things to to look at when you're trying to diagnose um, an issue like this. This is the purpose of this video. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to right click and I want you to hit mark data points. Now. I wired this car, so we won't see any missing data on this because um, I wired this car. But if you've got big gaps in your data points, 
um, some of this data is irrelevant because you're missing data because you've done a bad job wiring the car. You should probably click and watch some of my other videos uh, uh, about wiring the car. So that's the first thing I want you to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and get rid of that. So this is our RPM trace. And next I'm going to bring up boost. So I had a very lazy ramp in this thing. I'm going to actually I'm going to show you guys. Uh, we're going to we're going to reset the zero time. So when he lets go of the brakes, so we're going to click up here, and we're going to go when. Where are you? Oops. Trans brake is less than one. So there we go. So now if you look right there, you see down here 0, 0.0 and uh, wherever your cursor is will follow up here, right? So uh, you can see like wherever you click is going to tell you up here and wherever your cursor is shows you up there, right, right there, right there. So I'm going to click right here and we are 0.3 into the run, okay? So he had just let go of the trans brake and the uh the converter you know the engine just started to flash through the converter so this is the point where he's he's on the trans brake right there he's about to let go he lets go of the trans brake right there so you can see 0, 0.00 right so that's when the ecu stops seeing the input we've got 7.2 pounds of boost which is what we wanted and uh we've got 95 pounds of fuel pressure so all that stuff's good i've got some of this stuff up here that's kind of irrelevant but i'm, I'm leaving it up here for you guys to see um, you see the closed loop and learn doesn't do anything at this point because we're on the trans brake. And um, fuel flow is 1,010 pounds per hour. Um, I have fuel flow and then a base fuel flow. So there's a difference between these two. Uh, the base fuel flow is um, what you key into your base system fuel flow table. Okay. And then fuel flow is the culmination of this base fuel flow current learn and then closed loop compensation or any of these enrichments okay so um fuel flow is going to be different than base fuel flow if you've got closed loop compensation working or current the learn is doing anything right so i made other videos on the difference between closed loop and learn you should watch it you should also subscribe to my channel um, I make like next to nothing off of YouTube. So um, maybe go over to my website and buy a t-shirt or something. But anyway, uh, so we've got, we've got these misses here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up our fuel flow and our base fuel flow. So you see here, the green line is our base fuel flow. All right. And our base fuel flow wanted to be a good bit richer. And if you look, about 12% richer, okay? So 2% on current learn and 10% uh, on closed loop compensation. So to try to get to our target of uh, 3.8. Now, typically, um, if I was there, I would have shut this, I would have shut closed loop and learn off until we got to about 6,500 RPM, okay? So, uh, the reason being is because you have a, let's see, AFR left. There we go. When you let go of the trans brake, see this right here, um, this little sack you got going right here, and we put this next to our target. Remember, if you're, if you're tuning anything, if you're working on anything, always scale your target AFR and your AFR, your actual AFR to the same value so that they can lay over top of each other, okay? So... Anyway, uh, typically whenever you let go of the trans brake on an alcohol combo um, or a turbo combo, uh, you get this really rich condition when you let go of the button. Now, part of that is, um, you know, if you've got fuel flow multipliers on when you're, in the, when you're on the trans brake, and that's what some of this actually was, right? Uh, some of this had a little bit of a fuel flow multiplier happening while it was on the trans brake. Not a lot, but a little. You can see here. My base fuel flow table was 950, but the actual fuel flow was 1,087. There was an advanced table adding fuel, trying to get the turbo to light a little faster. The turbo lights very, very fast on this combo, so it's not really a necessity. But anyway, when you let go of the button, 
uh, you typically get this pretty rich condition. So closed loop came in here and tried to save the day, and um, and it, it it removed you know 12% fuel right before it coughed. So we see if we look tab one one line or one dot at a time, we're at minus 12%. We're at a, uh, an air fuel of 3.3, where our target was 3.8, right? But it was still pulling 12% fuel, and we were still at 3.3, and it coughed. So when it coughed, what you see here is you see a spike in air fuel. So you see this, this 4.1, 4.3 number? This is from a, a small miss, right? So you get a, you get a, a lean condition um, from a miss. So it's a false lean. And then... What happens is it comes back down here and uh, starts to follow target. So throughout the run, the it, it did pretty well. And if you remember what I said earlier, this had a base tune-up that I kind of just guessed at, and then it was only ran on the dyno until about 6,000 RPM. So overall, we didn't do too bad um, with, with this tune-up. But... Uh, it still had we still have these these two misses right and and I'll, I'll i'll expose what those were here in a minute but the just be cognitive of the fact that there's two different fuel flow numbers to be looking at here right we wanted 2289 and we got 2026 because we had a 12 percent correction here right so current learns going up closed loop is coming down and we're starting to follow target okay so once it starts to follow our target things start to clean up a little bit, right? So um, it starts to climb. So this is the converter grabbing it, right? Right, we, The way we want it. And we're still on low power. This, I believe this pass went 111.60 foot. Um, so we're still on a little low power for this combination. And we start to, the converter grabs it, starts to let go of it. It starts to charge through it. And we start getting up into RPM and we see 7,900 and we get the same thing. Right, so right here, uh, we right when we start to hit peak boost, we get that same spot. Right now, notice closed loop is is removing eight percent fuel, right, and our target air fuel is three eight, and our and our actual air fuel is three six, and um, we get that cough, and then look at once it coughs, we've got that we've got that very lean condition here, right. And then it comes back, fights through that cough, and charges on, and then runs out the back. Now, you can see the RPM trace doesn't look the greatest through here, okay? So this is actually, while it's going down the racetrack, um, two things are going on here. One, in the effort to be very conservative with a new combo, a new car, a new driver, the whole nine yards, this thing's pretty low on timing. So some of you guys that are watching uh, this and a lot of you guys that watch my YouTube channel, you guys race LS engines, and you see 22 or 22 degrees of timing with 24 pounds of boost, and you guys are like ready to throw up. That, that's nothing for this combo, okay? So this is a standard conventional headed big block Chevrolet. These things with a very, very, very well softened chamber this combo is going to like timing a lot. And that is part of our issue, okay? That, that is actually part of why we see this through here, right? So why we see this in the RPM trace is we're, we're just a little low on timing, right? The main problem here though, it's as dumb as it sounds, the main problem that we have here is that um, the, uh, the, the, the car owner and driver and crew and the, he's all in one, okay? He uh, just didn't realize that he was supposed to gap the plugs. So these plugs are floating around 28 thousandths. And, um, and if, we, if we were on smart coils, I have a feeling that we would have saw a lot more of this, but this has got an MSD Pro 600 in it. So it's still lit it off for the most part, but, um, but the plug gap was just too wide. And um, to be honest with you, you know, I commend the the, the car owner uh, for sure. I mean, you know, he, he he covered everything else. He just missed, you know, one of the basics, which isn't that big of a deal. It didn't hurt anything when uh, when he pulled the plug out and it, it looked brand new and he sent me a picture of it. And um, I asked him what the gap was and he says, what do you mean? I put him in out of the box. 
and uh, and that's when we that's when we figured it out. Which um, I don't I don't fault him in any way, shape, or form. I mean, first time out with the car, uh, there's not a lot of people out there that'll take a brand new car and go out and run 440s at 170 mile an hour. So um, I think he's done a great job. It's just I I asked him if he was all right if I made a video about this and uh, kind of explained what was going on. And um, and he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And I thought this was a good topic to cover for some of you guys that are newer to um, to tuning an engine. So um, check your spark plug gap. Put new plugs in it. Uh, learn to read your plugs. Uh, the plugs are the most important part of the engine. I promise you, if you leave one out, you're going to know it. So um, so listen to them. You know, look at them. Talk to them. Let them let them talk to you. Uh, they'll they'll teach you the the most out of anything. So hopefully this video was uh, informative. I'm trying to hunt down a a small misfire. Uh, I feel like we we've got just by cleaning this tune up up and pulling some of the fuel out of it. I'm 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 kind of hesitant to put any more timing in it because honestly, um, this car is going to be very 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 fast and uh, and I take safety very seriously. And so so honestly, if if I'm going to tune this thing for him. Um, I'm probably going to keep this car uh, slowed down into the 440 area until I can see uh, enough um, enough things in person with the driver and how he reacts to things before I really let him turn it up. Now, he's welcome to do whatever he wants. It's just if I'm involved with it, I, I take safety very seriously, and uh, I'm probably going to wind up, um, you know, keeping this thing, you know, kicked in the dick because – I don't want him to go too fast. Uh, you know, things change when you go from 440 to 420 to 40 to 390. So, um, but, you know, be mindful of your spark plugs. Read them. Uh, if you don't know how to read them, um, you know, if you're on gasoline and nitrous, find some old dude at the racetrack, and I promise you he will teach you a lot. Uh, you know, somebody with a, with a with a carb nitrous from who's been doing it for a long time, he'll teach you a lot about spark plugs. If you uh, if you've got you know turbo alcohol and you're trying to read plugs, um, I could probably eventually do a video on that, but uh, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon, just because I don't really like to get into tuning videos too much. Um, so, but ask your local uh, turbo alcohol racer and see what he has to say about you know his spark plugs or what yours look like, and uh, you know kind of just put two heads together on it. So. Uh, hopefully this answers and helps some people out there. Uh, I know it's kind of a niche market as to who'd be watching this video and making sense of it, but uh, hopefully it helps at least one person out there. So I'm naming the video overfueled and undertimed. And uh, if we had more timing in the engine, it would have lit this fuel and this air fuel would have actually come up. Right. So if we had more timing in the engine, this three, two uh, would have cleaned up around here, but we, we would have saw less correction, okay? There would have been a lot less correction out here. There wouldn't be a 10% correction uh, if we had more timing in the engine. Uh, it just it just wants to burn the fuel. I mean, we've got 3,600 pounds or 3,200 pounds per hour of fuel and only 22 degrees of timing. So uh, for this combo, it just needs um, a little bit more timing, a little bit less fuel, and a little bit tighter of a, a plug gap. So uh when when you see these posts on online and, and say people say hey how much timing am i supposed to run now i hope you guys kind of understand uh why one number doesn't fit the bill for everybody you know you kind of have to read the plug uh, so all right hopefully that answers some questions see you